and then after I give you some updates to what's going on here, what we do for those that are here for the first time, um, we will do some Q&A, answer questions, and right around that time, we should be having our uh, sponsors we partner with joining us and get a chance to chat and learn from them uh, here this evening. Um, so, um, quick bit about myself for those who uh, I'm meeting, who I met for the first time. A couple people uh, said, oh, you're Don. Um, and I realized maybe I should listen to my staff and wear the name tag, but I, but I never do. Um, so I'm Don Wenner. I'm the founder and CEO here at DLP. Started the company 17 years ago in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, we've been coming here to Asheville now for six or seven years. We have a home here um, for the last uh, five years or so. Um, see my wife, uh, Carla, who's around here somewhere. Where's Carla in the back, back there? Yes. Uh, baby Jake, uh, actually, I think we have a couple of pictures on the moment I'll talk about. My two older sons, Donnie and Alex, who are with uh, my mom here in Asheville uh, right now. Um, since starting DLP, uh, we have closed billions of dollars in transactions. About $4 billion now we've done as a lender. Uh, and we've done about $4 billion as an investor, as a buyer, uh, as an operator, um, and rapidly uh, growing. Um, then Inc. 5000, fastest growing company. This is not supposed to be public, now, but for the 10th straight year, um, the official list comes out in a couple of weeks. Thank you. So a decade straight of uh, being one of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in America it just shows kind of the consistency to how we built the business. I live in St. Augustine, Florida as our, our primary location, um, but spend much of the summers uh, getting out of the incredible heat, much of the rest of the country is dealing with right now, uh, coming up and enjoying beautiful uh, Asheville. Um, these are some pictures of, of Jake. So um, funny if we adopted uh, Jake basically in the middle of a capital dinner um, about nine months ago. He's now 10 months old um, and uh, doing great. So uh, very, very blessed. And uh, Carl will be happy to show you lots more pictures uh, if interested here uh, later tonight. Um, this is where we operate. Um, uh, we, uh, if you've been with us for a little bit, you'll know, and you've probably already been seeing this, but we've been doing quite a bit of moving. Um, we moved and did a grand opening in, um, two grand openings, and we're about to do a third. So uh, this is our building here in Asheville. So anybody familiar with downtown familiar, this is the College Avenue side, 37 College, the other side is 39 Pine, so the corner of Church and Pine. Um, we bought this building last year, and we are going to have our offices on the two first floors, the first floor of Patton and the first floor of College, and then uh, the first floor is on the second to fifth floor, and we've got parking, so we'll be in there. Um, uh, June must have added this, our head of development. I'm saying January, he's saying June, um, but, uh, but soon uh, we'll be, we'll be in, in there. Uh, we're excited about it. There's some of the awards, some of the things we've done, the recent, uh, the biggest themes of our growth and the awards and recognition we receive are for number one, uh, growth, and number two, for building a great work uh, place, a great environment for our team members. Um, and, uh, um, you know, one of our team members, uh, uh, Shannon, who's around here uh, somewhere with him, in the back room. So I just heard a really cool story of Shannon five minutes before I got up here on a uh, stage. Um, that uh, um, uh, she was at the airport, this was yesterday, uh, taking a trip in here from Charlotte, a connecting flight from Charlotte, and uh, was uh, helping a lady she didn't even know, an elderly lady in a wheelchair through the airport, um, just the kind of person she is and type of people we have here in the organization, and was helping getting on a plane and, and uh, had to tell the staff that she didn't, uh, wasn't even with the person, she just realized somebody had to step up and help, and that's certainly what Shannon does all the time here. And she's the person who puts these presentations together and much of the marketing you see. So pretty cool, uh, pretty cool story I just heard five, five minutes ago, but not at all surprising when I heard it was uh, Shannon. Hopefully you get a chance to do our PT and you know, we'll to them. So many around the your tables, yes, make sure you chance to talk to them. Today I like to say I get to do the presentation and fun stuff that they're really incredible people uh, making these results happen and each one of them incredible in their own uh, right. Um, all right, so uh, uh, are we doing Slido or not? No Slido, okay. Um, so, um, some app on our phones. Um, um, but I'm going to uh, have you do a shout it out. We've got a small enough room here. I'm going to ask some Q&A here as I go through and kind of explain what we do. And I want you guys to, to help share. So, some of them are going to be obvious if you're listening to me. If you're not, I'm going to know. Um, so, how many years have you been one of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in America? 20 years in a row, a decade. Which is, to give you an idea of the measure of growth over three years, we've grown by over 325% every three years. 
Um, and you said any last three years, last uh, 17 years. Um, all right, so this one is one that you have to play a venue list a little bit, or maybe you read that document venue or choreography. What is our B ad? Our B what DLP is BI? Does anybody know? Am I a DLP team member? Anybody know what our big hair ideation goal is as an organization? We're on the right track. So to become a Fortune 500 company, to positively impact 10 million lives. Um, what about 700 some thousand homes a day, which I'm not going to give the exact number of it yet. Because um, it is. How many lives have we impacted at DLP? I kind of gave that in there. 778,000. It's your maze lives. When, when last time we did this presentation, the number in there was 641,000. So that's somebody who helped provide affordable workforce housing. Yes, thank you. That's somebody who helped provide with a safe and fitting place to live. That's a real estate sponsor developer, like uh, KPN Home, that you provided a loan to. Um, an investor like yourself who invests in capital with it, the solution we provide it through different services we do here at DLP. Um, this is what we do. So uh, if you look at our website or, or look at a lot of things we do, it looks like we do a lot of different things which we, we do. Um, but fundamentally, our business is, is relatively straightforward. It's these four areas we call Everything here at DLP starts with you. It starts with, we like to say, faith centered wealth creators who choose to invest their capital with us. That's the start of everything for us. We can't do anything we do um, without that. Um, and then once capital is invested with us, we invest in housing. That's what we do at DLP. So we do so as a developer, we do so as a builder, we do so as an operator, we invest in multi family, we invest in single family, we invest in existing, we do ground up, we do so as a lender, we do so as a. Right now, 25,000 residential units providing housing to more than 75,000 people. Right now, we together, those of you investors uh, are doing that. We funded more than $3 billion in deals as a buyer, as a partner, as a lender in the past one year, the last 12 months alone. We have 287 million of operating revenue this past year. And we have 32 operating partners. Uh, who we went to and partner with and a part of our community, including Reef, who just joined this year. So our biggest but longest standing partners, make sure you get a chance to talk to Kip and team here uh, tonight. We've done close to $2 billion of deals together over the past five or so years. Kip's trying to make that $4 billion by the end of the year. Uh, so uh, uh, we have a lot of stuff uh, going on uh, together, so make sure you get a chance to chat with them. Um, all right, so this is sort of, I guess, a somehow a trick question. It's not a uh, simple answer. What do you think? What, what, what's the reason you should be interested in investing with us? If this investors, feel free to give you a take. Why should new people be interested in investing with us as a manager? Because you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said that one, but I like that one. Uh, China, of course. So uh, we say the biggest thing is, is the track record we've, we've established. So 10 plus years now, similar to our Inc. 5000, 10 plus years of exceeding return targets every single period and every single fund, consistent double digit returns again and again and again. And that's the strong discipline that as a manager we put in place, which I'll touch on more as I, as I uh, go through this. Um, here's our leadership team. Oops, let me go back here. Our leadership team, um, uh, uh, Bo standing over here. Uh, Jim had a development here. Melanie is somewhere around here in the back of the room. I know Claudia's gonna walk in the door any second. Oh, there she is. Um, some of our senior leaders here uh, driving results uh, number on their way up here to Asheville uh, right now. Um, all right, so here's one I hope, I hope some of our existing investors know. Uh, what are the four crises we're focused on here at DLP? Four crises. Affordable housing, yes. 
affordable housing ahead again. There's three more. Affordable housing is, is definitely the biggest one. Happiness, yes, very good. Legacy, yes, very good. One more. All right, DLPT members, help them out. Jobs. Um, so happiness crisis, the housing affordability crisis, American workforce crisis, jobs, and the legacy crisis. So our business model, that flyer we showed, we're able to impact all four of these crises uh, through our activities, through how we run and grow the business with your support. Um, uh, the biggest, uh, most obvious one being the affordable workforce housing. Um, but a big part of why we have all these sponsors here with us over the next couple of days is not only are we helping them grow their businesses because it helps reduce our risk in investing money with them, it helps us deploy more money with them, but it also helps them to build organizations that create more jobs. I believe with all the disruption going on through technology, it scares a lot of people like we worry about it, all the jobs that are going to be gone that don't exist in five years or 10 years or 20 years, that scares a lot of people. To me, it's very exciting. And lots of new jobs will be created. Those new jobs are created by entrepreneurial small businesses. And um, that's a hard thing to do. It's hard to create jobs. It's hard to continually scale and build uh, a business that creates jobs. And that's what we focus on helping uh, our, our partners do. Um, and not only create jobs, but create jobs that help their team members feel connected to a purpose and avoid the happiness crisis. The fact that so many people in America today, somewhere around 40% of people, suffer with some form of unhappiness. We have the highest levels of, dis of depression we've ever had. And generally speaking, people lack connection. First and foremost, they lack connection with the Lord. And second, they lack connection here with a, with a purpose to their, to their work, to their day-to-day their, to their -day life. And, and we believe it's, I believe it's my job as a leader to help connect my employees to, to a purpose, to a meaning, to, to understand the work they do every day is part of something bigger than themselves. And I believe that's the biggest way outside of a relationship with the Lord to avoid uh, the happiness crisis. And then the wealth legacy crisis is one that all of you should be um, uh, hopefully uh, very aware of. Uh, sometimes we call it the shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations. Anybody familiar with that? All right, the fact that most first generation wealth creators have their wealth lost 100% by the second or the third generation, the majority, right? Um, and it's not uh, an investment or financial planning issue as much as it's a parenting issue um, uh, in more cases than not. And that's what our prosperity membership, I'll touch on at the end, is about helping people build the communication and the relationships to avoid this happening in their, their family. Um, so we like to say doing well while doing good. Um, and we're able to do that through our funds. And we had some of this conversation with a few, few of these early, few of you earlier tonight. You can do this. You can impact all these crises while still making great returns. They don't have to be at conflict. Some of our recent successes, we opened a brand new office in Pennsylvania where we started the company a couple of weeks ago. We did our grand opening there. You can see kind of a picture on the right. Big, gorgeous uh, new building. Um, we're going to be converting most of the building, though, to housing. Um, and, uh, but our offices are on the eighth floor there. Um, I'm going to skip over this here. Um, I keep, there we go. Then right before that, we did our official grand opening of our St. Augustine, Florida office. We've been in this office a few months, but uh, did a lot of renovations and did a grand opening. And soon we'll be doing it, much sooner than Jim says, we're going to be doing our grand opening event uh, here in Asheville um, as well. Um, one really cool thing, this feels like a while ago, at least for most of us, our knees are, are not sore anymore and our, our feet aren't too bad anymore. Um, but uh, about a month ago, uh, we did something pretty cool here, and we're telling you guys about this for a couple of reasons. One, because we're going to be soliciting you to come do this with us next year. Um, so uh, Make-A-Wish, a phenomenal organization, I'm sure some of you support. Um, their biggest fundraising event they do is what they call the Trailblazer Challenge. And uh, what it is is you go out and you hike. Uh, they say 28 miles. It turned out to be, I think, 31, we found out. Uh, but you go out and you hike uh, 30 miles in a day, and you, know, you raise capital around it. So they drop you off in the dark at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, or you get up at 3.30, leave, and you get dropped off in the dark. Then I think it was 5 a.m., and you hike you know, 30 miles um, through the, the mountain. So we started in, um, um, what was the name of the town? Somebody remind me. Um, not Cashers, yes, yeah, started in Cashers and hiked 30 miles in a day. Um, so we raised over $100,000 for Make-A-Wish. We did this with our leadership team and a bunch of their spouses. Yes, thank you. So we had about 40 of us doing this. Um, and But next year, our plan, and we're finalizing now, is we want to have 100 people doing it or more. So we're going to invite some of our elite members and our investors to come do this with us. 
Uh, so we're giving you plenty of heads up now to train and, and get prepared uh, uh, for it as it was a heck of a day. Jen, were you going to say something? Uh, so Jim likes to t t tell me uh, I only finished 35 minutes ahead of him, and he was basically running it on a broken foot. Um, uh, so uh, Patrick and I, uh, so Patrick is a chief experience officer and an incredible, you know, tri uh, uh, crossfitter and in great shape. Um, uh, he finished second, I finished third. We finished together out of uh, about 100 people or so. Uh, we were first for most of the entire, so I didn't, we didn't see a single person for many, many hours. Um, and then a 20-year-old college athlete blew past us the last six miles, and we never, we never caught him. Patrick might have been able to, but, but I was not able to. Um, so we finished second and third, and, and uh, it was a great thing. And the cool thing is so a lot of DLP people have never, you know, who's ever hiked 30 miles in a day, right, or run through? Like most people have never done that, right? Uh, a couple have. So a lot of our DLP people have probably never run or hiked 10 miles in a day, right, or maybe even five, right? So we had a lot of people. This isn't normal for them, of course who not only finished, I think 70 to 80% of our people who did it, spouse and all, finished the entire 30 miles. Um, and then people who didn't finish went, you know, did 15 miles or 18 miles or 20 miles, way more than they ever thought they were going to be able to do. Nobody got hurt out of all, all 100 people who did it all together. So it was a really great, successful day all the way around. And we were able to, 100 grand does somewhere around 15 or 16 grants or, uh, you know, wishes that we're able to grant through that. Uh, so pretty pretty cool activity. So get ready. June June 2nd, I think it is. Uh, next year. So we'll, we'll, we'll tell you more as we get closer. Um, all right, so uh, with Reef here, we just closed, I think officially Monday, uh, two new deals in Corpus Christi, uh, uh, Texas. Um, so two really nice properties um, together that are basically part of now a 23 community portfolio that we've done over the past year. Um, did a grand opening event on our first ever uh, RV resort community um, right out outside of Jacksonville. It's called Island Oaks RV Resort. Really amazing, cool property. So we did our, our uh, grand opening event there on Friday. Um, really awesome. Um, you guys are, are one, not only this property, but a bunch of other stuff we're working on. Uh, many of you are going to want to stay at our RV community parks here very soon as they're pretty, pretty amazing. Very different than if you stopped at the KOA on the side of the highway. Um, uh, pretty, pretty awesome stuff. So we'll share more information about this, but big you know, luxury resort style pools and restaurants and amazing, amazing uh, first of what will be many of these um, with one of our elite members, Chris Funk. Um, we were named the 191st fastest growing company in the Americas by the Financial Times, eighth fastest in financial services. Um, we were the 13th, fat, we're the 13th largest real estate sales team in America. Um, that's our 10th year in a row as the number one sales team uh, in all of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, one of the top 20 in America. It's out of over a million real estate sales teams in America. Um, so that's Jonathan Campbell, who I think will join us a little bit later tonight, who runs um, our real estate sales team, has for many years. Um, this is a big one for those of you involved. We got on Friday our official state approval to acquire our bank that we're going to be acquiring. Um, so some of you have been seeing us talk about this for about two years now. We've been officially working on this. We got state approval. We're still waiting on FDIC approval. We think we'll have that in the next couple weeks, and we'll be closing in August. Um, so uh, pretty, pretty excited. That's our expectation. Um, so pretty excited about that. Um, all right, so um, where we're going, um, this is a property we're about to buy uh, right outside of Houston, Texas, a brand new property with another uh, elite member called Elevate. Um, we just bought this property in Jacksonville. Where we're going to build 700 single-family homes, uh, many of them build for rent in the Jacksonville area with one of our other elite members called Corner Lot. Um, this is in our hometown of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We're building a uh, mid-rise, brand new apartment community um, in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So a lot of, a lot of big things going on. Um, all right, so I'm going to jump back to some participation here. Um, who here is familiar with our PPP, productivity per person? Just a couple. So productivity per person is how we measure how well we're growing our organization. It's how much net revenue we generate per person at DLP. So it's how effective we are, how much we can produce per person in our organization. So take a guess. What do you, how much did we increase this past year? 265,000 is the number guess. What percentage do you guess that we increased? 250%? Wow, I like the sound of that. 72%. Uh, 
So even though we added you know, many additional corporate team members, we increased our productivity by over 70% per person, which means although we're growing, we're winning lots of awards, we're growing productively, uh, profitably, which is a really good sign when you're going into volatile times, right? Um, our strategy at DLP, um, we, we call it eight-step strategy, is first and foremost is we raise capital. This is our entire investment thesis, our entire strategy. Kip, don't try to steal it, okay? Um, uh, we raise capital into evergreen funds from individuals, including yourselves. We invest in building and improving communities. Uh, uh, we partner uh, and lend to great sponsors that we put our capital out with, such as Reef. We invest in strong markets with job and population growth. That's mainly throughout the Sun Belt. We focus on stabilized yield to cost, the basis we're buying, the unleveraged return. We invest in people, build long-term relationships, and build a community, we execute consistently and we communicate proactively. And hopefully you're finding each of those things from your perspective, the execution, the communication from your experience with us. And this is how we get the kind of results we get by investing in people. Uh, these are some of the new team members in the last uh, 90 days who've joined the investor relations team alone. So these are all new team members who all joined us mostly from other areas at DLP. Uh, actually, they're not all new, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, three, three of them, uh, Brett, uh, Christina, and Mike, were already on the team, but everybody else joined uh, this team uh, uh, from other areas of the organization to make sure we're continuing to provide you with great service as we grow the number of uh, families we get to support. Um, all right, so um, I'm going to touch a little bit here. Before I wrap up with explaining the investment vehicles we have today, I want to frame a little bit about this affordable crisis that we're, affordable housing crisis that we're dealing with. And first, bring it home a little bit here to, uh, to Asheville. Um, so this is a quote from, some of you may uh, know this gentleman, Jerry, um, who is the uh, prevention director for Homebound here in Asheville. And his quote is, most of us are living paycheck to paycheck and living much closer to an experience of homelessness. Um, according to the North Carolina Housing Coalition, over 30% of this county um, uh, is cost burdened meaning they're spending over 30% of their gross income just on the rent alone. 48% um, of renters and 20% of homeowners are having difficulty affording their homes. So when you look at just the rental community, it's almost half of all renters are very much struggling. More than 30% of their gross income um, is going out just to pay their rent. Um, estimate is in this region that will be, uh, by 2025, we'll need another, on top of the already short, ready shortfall we have, another 20,000 units just to, to handle the needs of the, the, this market alone from affordable uh, housing standpoint, just in, the, in these three you know, local counties. Uh, right now, the average one bedroom rent in Asheville is $1,436 a month. 60% uh, of the people in, this, in the local market can't afford $1,436 a month. Um, uh, and we have almost no vacancy, less than 2% vacancy in this market. So very little that's available, and what is available um, is very difficult for, for many people in this market to afford, and rents are going up very, very quickly. Um, for, take it to a bigger scale, from a from United States standpoint, we have over 5 million housing units short today and growing every month. That We're not keeping up with, with the demand today and the amount of construction to keep up with uh, population growth, and it's worse any, in the Sun Belt, kind of like we just showed with Asheville. 5 million housing units short today and growing. Another uh, great quote here is, the cost of housing goes up uh, in a community people may not be able to afford to live there, so they'll move further out. That's the common thing that happens. But we like to say we invest in housing that is affordable for the local workforce where they, where they can live and work, right? So to be able to live where you work, we're not having to go live an hour away, an hour and a half away from where you work um, uh, to be able to afford to live there. This impedes the ability of businesses to hire workers. Um, uh, and it's not good for the local economy, right, when people aren't living where they, where they work. That's a problem many cities, including this one, are having. The shortage of land and labor um, have also led to increasing this, this demand. You know, construction has slowed of recent, uh, even though demand continues to grow. We have the greatest shortfall of housing in American history ever right now. The greatest shortfall of housing ever right now and uh, rapidly growing the greatest uh, challenge of, of people being cost burdened uh, uh, we've ever had. Um, um, so give you a couple examples of what we're doing here locally. We just went under contract uh, on a piece of land here in Spartansburg, so about an hour away, to build 240 uh, apartments 
Um, we're buying this land, a great location. We're buying this land at 14,000 a unit. We're able to build really cost-effective value engineered apartments uh, to fill this local need where you see there the one mile AMI, that's the area median income around this property, $41,000, right? If your income is $41,000, very hard to afford, you know, $2,000 a month apartments, right? Um, as you can imagine. We just bought a property in the Building Communities Fund on Monday of this week in Palatka, um, which is about 30 minutes outside of St. Augustine, uh, St. John uh, County area, um, where we're going to be building 198 uh, duplexes where our rents are going to be 1100 to 1700 a month uh, in a market that has basically no affordable workforce housing. There's basically no housing there um, other than subsidized housing, no vacancy in the market. Um, that's the biggest thing we need right now is more housing. If there was more housing, if there was more supply, rents wouldn't keep growing the way they are. We need more housing. Of kind of any, any rates, if more housing came in, it's going to keep rents more affordable. Um, this is where Platka is located, um, right outside of, you know, Jim says 50 minutes, I say 35. I think he drives slower than me from our headquarters in, in St. Augustine. Um, so we're going to start this construction in just the next month or two. Um, it's fully permit ready. Um, we're going to start providing much needed housing to our local market uh, very, very quickly. Um, all right, and the last thing, new thing that's been going on here is we at DLP that I want to highlight is bringing in new relationships. That's actually pictures of, of KIPP. Um, uh, at our last event, but we've got at this event coming up, you'll see meet some of them tonight. We have 50 or so of our existing partners who we're lending to and partnering with here for the week. Um, and then we'll have uh, 70, 80, 90 prospective new partners that we can lend to and partner with, invest and build affordable workforce housing uh, together. Um, all right, so I'm gonna give you a quick overview of our funds and then open up to questions here as dinners will be coming out. Um, all right, so I, I kind of telegraphed a little bit of the challenge with housing already, but take a guess, how much, I just told you, we have the greatest undersupply of housing ever, um, rents are, are going up, becoming harder and harder to afford, afford housing. How much have rents gone up in the past year? Take a guess. 25, 22, 30, 10, 16, good guesses, you guys are pretty close there. 19% average median rent increase across America. Right? That's just in the last 12 months. Um, it, rents went up from 2010 to 2020, which was tremendous, by 70% right? in 10 years. We went up 19% last year alone. Think about that. If a rent was 1,000, now it's 1,200. Right? That's significant. Um, so uh, a couple examples of what we're buying in the housing fund right now. We just bought this property also in Corpus Christi, 252 units. Um, average rents of, I believe, about 1,200. Um, we bought a couple properties in Houston with one of our elite members called Colony Capital earlier this year. Um, um, so, uh, so rents have gone up 19%. Take a guess how much incomes have gone up. Zero, five, five, six. Yeah, pretty good. So this is a positive. It might not feel like a positive to some employers, but 9%. Wages have gone up about 9% in the past year. Doesn't keep up with the 19% increase in housing. It's significant. So from 2010 to 2020, depending on what data you look at, incomes only went up 6 to 8% for an entire decade. Right? We saw more growth in the average income in the past one year than we saw for an entire decade. So that's a positive sign. It's a positive sign for us as investors. Income going up is really, really important for people to be able to afford their rents. All right, I've already kind of telegraphed this one. We're 5.24 million housing units short in America today. So that's what we're investing in doing, building and improving affordable workforce housing. Another property we bought in Houston a couple months ago. This was a student housing property that we now opened up to the entire market. So we rent to both students and non-students. We did the same thing at this property at Granite Rum Creek, at Rum Creek in Tuscaloosa. Um, uh, another really beautiful property in Houston. Houston was maybe the most undervalued market in the country for the past year. It's been a market we've been very, very active in. All right, so all the investments I showed you, everything we talked about, uh, we do across five different funds here at DLP. I'll give you a kind of quick, quick overview over each one. And then, of course, Larry and Brett and Bo, myself, will be around, and we're happy to chat with you in more detail, and we'll be opening up to any questions on anything I didn't go over. Um, but I'm going to walk you through what we do. So five funds sounds like a lot, um, but to simplify what we do, again, we invest in affordable workforce housing. All of our funds are uh, investing across this spectrum, mainly across the Sunbelt region, 
Um, all of our funds are evergreen, open-ended funds um, that, that put investors first. All of our funds pay above market returns. All of our funds pay you a preferred return before we earn anything. Um, so the first fund I'll talk about is the one that builds new housing, the DLP Building Community Funds. All this fund does is build new housing communities. Investing in this fund is the fund that you can invest in that will make the biggest impact on this affordable housing crisis because we're building new housing communities. Uh, right now, we have about 4,000 units in development and construction right now in this fund. We just launched it last year. This is our only fund that does not pay out a current monthly return, um, but it does have the highest return targets, 13% target. We've exceeded our targets in all of our funds, as we'll highlight here in a moment. Uh, month, annual distributions uh, each year, preferred return before we earn anything of 8%, even before we earn a management fee. So that invests in, in building new housing. The DOP Housing Fund is the fund that invests in existing housing communities. In fact, this fund owns around 12,000 housing units right now, existing housing units producing income. This fund doesn't need much selling as it generated a 45.27% net return last year. Um, net to investors, um, we've been at about 30% since we launched the fund a few years ago. Um, so great returns investing in providing workforce housing across America. Um, so uh, this fund is a private REIT, very, very tax efficient. Most of these last two funds have incredible tax efficiencies. So last year, investors received a 45% return. Take a guess at how much taxes they paid. Zero. They had a taxable loss, but generated a 45% return. So very, very tax efficient fund. Not targeting 45% returns, but targeting uh, low double digit returns. But like all of our funds, we set the target at a place that we feel we can exceed and uh, investor expectations. Um, so 10 to 12 percent targets, monthly distributions. Again, we pay you before we even earn a management fee. Each and every month you have the option of taking distributions. So then we'll move to our lending side of our business. So those are the two funds that own real estate. We have three funds that make loans against real estate. The first one is the preferred credit fund. This fund makes both first and subordinate position loans to successful real estate investors. Um, we only lend in this fund with significant equity behind the fund. We only lend to our elite members, to our strongest borrowers in this fund. Um, this is a fund we launched just late last year. Uh, generates double digit returns with all the income distributed on a current basis. And what's great about this fund and our uh, longer standing lending fund is all of our, uh, our funds are very, our lending funds are very liquid. So you can redeem out of this fund with just 90 days notice. So no long term commitment, come in double digit returns with liquidity. So all the income gets distributed out on a current basis. Very similar to the lending fund. This is our longest standing fund. This fund only does senior secured first position mortgages. This fund is about $700 million of loans outstanding today. Um, and we've generated about, well, actually exactly, it works out to right now, 13% return net to investors over the past eight plus years. We've, we've paid out double digit returns every single month for 100 plus months. Um, all the income distributed monthly um, uh, with 90 day liquidity. And then uh, I already telegraphed this, but what, what was, oh, actually I didn't. Last month's return, 11.04%. This is our actual annualized return every month for the last number of years, double digit returns every single month. So far this year, a little under a 12% return, which is basically a 1% return a month. That's what this fund's been doing for many years. And last but not least, we have the positive note fund. This is our only fund that you don't invest in as a partner. Instead, you're actually a lender to the fund. So this is, a, in, in many people's perspectives, our lowest risk position because you're getting a guaranteed fixed return from DLP on your investment. Kind of think of it as a bond alternative. You're getting a fixed uh, coupon ranging from 5 to 7.5%. That fixed return depends upon how long you choose to invest. You choose one or three or five years and how much you choose to invest, 100000 on up, 5 to 7.5% fixed return with all the income distributed monthly, or like all of our funds, you can choose to reinvest it if you so choose. So those are our different offerings. Um, last couple questions to wrap up before I open it up to your questions. Uh, how many months, quarters, years have we missed any of our return targets in any of our funds? Zero, thank you, um, never. Um, and uh, in the back of this uh, overview, you can see, I know I covered a lot quickly there, but you can see an overview of each of the funds, kind of how they compare with one another. And then, of course, that's where we can really bring value in sitting down with you and helping you evaluate based on your needs, your goals, uh, what your, what your uh, time frame is to the capital you'd be thinking about investing, 
which fund, uh, if any, could make the best sense uh, for you. Um, so this is a little snapshot, but that's all in the back of those quarterly uh, updates there, which is quarterly updates from uh, report. The summer report will be out in the next week or so um, as well, which we're excited about. Um, all right, here's our, our performance. You'll see a lot of this in the quarter two reports, but this is a little bit of a snapshot of what we did in Q2. Uh, very active, district, uh, originated altogether, um, close to $300 million of loans, acquired $100 um, plus million dollars in uh, rental homes, raised, thank you, $120 million of capital from our investors, um, and hit all of our return targets across all of our funds uh, once again. All right, so last thing I want to wrap up with is our prosperity membership and an upcoming event we have. So we set up this prosperity membership, which this is not, nothing we sell. Um, it doesn't cost anything to you to be a part of in terms of uh, financial uh, investment, but it is a, a time commitment, a commitment of your focus on avoiding that shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves crisis, that legacy crisis. It's a commitment to investing in, as we call it, the prosperity, family, wealth, and legacy memberships. It's a commitment to investing in your family your legacy, in addition, certainly, uh, your wealth. And so we meet uh, together two times a year. We do two conferences. We did one in March um, in Florida, in Ponte Vedra. We're doing our next one in Puerto Rico, which I'll touch on in November. And then we connect on a monthly basis. We do a, a call and get together uh, where we, we train and teach and bring inspiration and, and, and share. And then our investor success managers throughout the year will help check in with you, help you use a number of unique tools we built to help you uh, get the most fulfillment out of life, to live and leave a legacy, as we like to say. So we encourage you, if that rings a bell with you at all, uh, talk to Larry, talk to Brett, talk to Rich, whoever your investor success manager is. Uh, we'd love to have you join this community if, you're, if you want to commit to doing the work and doing it along a community of some pretty amazing people. And one of the great ways to get familiar with this and get started um, is to join us at our next big event. So these are some pictures from our March event, which we did in Ponte Vedra. Um, uh, uh, we did a spring event only for our elite members in St. Simons. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, capital dinners planned, so if you want to travel with us anywhere, we'll be in Dallas, Texas in August. We'll be in Atlanta in September. We'll be in St. Augustine in October. Ho hopefully all of you get our emails, but you can always go to dlpcapital.com's events, see all of our upcoming events. Most of our events we stream virtually as well, um, so you can always join us virtually if you can't be with us live. But the big event I want to talk about is Puerto Rico. So November 9th to the 12th, who's been to Puerto Rico? All right, few, not, not that many. Um, so it's a great excuse and reason to come. Um, this is an event focused on longevity, health, and wellness. Um, I've been uh, telling everybody uh, who listen um, that I'm going to live to 150. It's one of my, one of my goals. And uh, most people laugh at me, I think, including my wife, when I say I'm going live to live to 150 and think that that's, you know, silly. Or, uh, but I promise you, after you come to this event, you're going to, too, believe you can live to 150 it is unbelievable what's going on in the world of longevity and uh, 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 reversing aging. And uh, so we've got a tremendous number of the world's experts um, in the world of, of health, wellness, and longevity. Anybody heard of a book called Life Force? Life Force? A few? So Life Force is the number one best selling book in America. I think it has been for eight, 10 weeks. It's uh, sort of written by Tony Robbins, he's the main face on the book. Um, the real kind of author of the book is a guy named Bill Harari, uh, Bob Harari, um, and Bob's a PhD, MD, Nobel Prize winning, incredible um, a doctor, researcher. Um, he's one of our speakers, the CEO of an uh, uh, organization that Tony Robbins is very involved with, that the book kind of promotes life. One of the world's experts in longevity runs the longevity clinic, the biggest one in the world. He's going to be there, a gentleman who runs the largest uh, um, stem cell research, uh, regenerative stem cell uh, uh, clinic out of, it's out of Costa Rica, Dr. Uh, G, uh, Nobel Prize winner as well. He's going to be one of the speakers. Um, I think we just signed up Dave uh, Asprey, um, who's uh, probably the biggest biohacker in the world. Um, tremendous number of great speakers. Somebody get to meet here tonight, Amanda uh, Holmes. Uh, if you met, know Chet Holmes, uh, the ultimate sales machine. Uh, Amanda's uh, CEO of uh, Chet Holmes uh, organization and also an expert in a number of forms of alternative health and uh, going to do some, some pretty cool. She'd be happy to talk with you about it as well. I think right now we're up to 15 or 16 incredible speakers. We're still adding more. And what the cool thing is, I don't think, Claudia can correct me, but I don't think we paid any money for any of our speakers. Uh, so when they started hearing some of the names who are going to be there, they wanted to be there. 
to learn from the world's experts um, and be in this kind of melting pot of all these new ideas and research and what's going on. So it's going to be incredible. We'll be talking about family and legacy and such as well, but the main theme is going to be on, on longevity and, and health and wellness. And it's, it's going to be transformational. Everybody's going to be there. So the event might sound like forever from now. It's in November. Um, the problem, and if those of you who've been to Puerto Rico know, there's not a ton of great places to kind of stay. It's a small island. Uh, the, the kind of the nicer areas um, that you want to come stay in, they're already, I looked the other day, you cannot book any hotel room over that week in Puerto Rico right now, anywhere in San Juan area. There's nothing available. Um, so we blocked off a, a room block, which expires in, I think, late September. Um, that's really the only way you can get and stay there now. So we're going to run out of rooms, um, and you're not going to be able to find a place. You can reach out to them in October and say you want to come. Uh, you're going to have to hopefully have a friend there be sleeping on uh, somebody's floor because there's not going to be anywhere to, to stay, and we're going to run out of space. So uh, please uh, sign up. Come join us. It's going to be a, a tremendous, uh, tremendous event. We're happy to chat with you more about it, of course, tonight as well. Um, so uh, ne next uh, uh, step for anybody new to us, wants to learn more, reach out to whoever you're already working with on the investor success team or you don't know who to work with, talk to Larry who introduced me here in the back of the room and he'll either help you or get in touch with the right person. Love to chat with you uh, more. And with that said, I'm gonna open it up uh, to questions. Um, Brett's got a mic, so we'll bring that mic around. Feel free to get up as we answer questions, grab a drink um, as well. And we'll, we'll take questions as, as they come. Um, so just raise your hand and grab it, grab it. Um, so good question. So, uh, so we're acquiring a bank as an affiliate of DLP, and and this wasn't meant to be a plug for this, but uh, one of the benefits of the Prosperity membership, um, there's a bunch of benefits to it above and beyond the content. Uh, one of the other benefits is we give our Prosperity members first access to unique investment opportunities. So um, when we had the bank opportunity come about, we opened it up to our Prosperity members first. Um, and unfortunately for anybody else, they capital um, pretty quickly. So uh, we raised all the capital from our investors to, to acquire the bank. Um, and we will bring in more capital as we grow the bank then. Uh, but the reason we'll continue to need capital and everything else we do is the bank will, uh, really what it'll do is it'll provide another uh, balance sheet that we can provide uh, loans, capital to great real estate developer sponsors, builders. It'll serve a, a, a part of their business today that generally speaking, DLP is not able to fund today. Right? We can't fund some of their really kind of easy down the middle uh, lending that they could go to a bank for today and get you know, lower cost capital. So it's gonna allow us to serve that, that need for a lot of our borrowers and only strengthen and deepen our relationship to then fill their needs on the other types of lending they need through our, our direct balance sheet. So we think of the, the bank only as complementing and helping us grow our private uh, lending business as well. Um, one thing. Everyone hear me okay? Okay, it sounded like there was helium coming out of this microphone before, but I think they fixed it. Uh, so everybody, just a quick note on the bank. Um, there's basically kind of two ways that uh, we knight people in America. One is you kind of, they get approved to buy a sports franchise, and number two, they get approved to buy a bank. So it's a pretty big deal that, that Don and the team are buying a bank. It's pretty awesome. It's very, very hard to get approved uh, to buy a bank. They take that very seriously. Um, the second thing I want to say is the about the just to give a shout out to the health and wellness and longevity event in Puerto Rico, everybody. Um, Don does look good for 92 years old, doesn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think, you know, making the financial returns is, is, you know, it's fun. It's cool. Hey, great. But I think probably the greatest gift uh, you can give anyone is more time, you know, more time to hug the hug the people that you love and spend time with people that you want to spend time with. And this is uh, the longevity piece is really amazing. And it's not the longevity piece that's at the end of your life. It's, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm vibrant and I can go and travel and enjoy life. So, so I definitely, uh, definitely look into that, that event for sure. Thank you, Bo. Any other questions?
you guys aren't going to let me off that easy. When we did this in, in Bethlehem a few weeks ago, I think the question went for an hour and a half. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Uh, but, uh, but, but I expect there's got to be more out of this group. Jackie. So, Don, can you speak to the market conditions and how you believe that that will impact the portfolio? Um, thank you, Jackie. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the, the question we, ex we, we expect at this time in the, the market right now. So, you know, the, the challenges today that we have faced in the market are uh, instability is, is really the biggest thing that kind of the fear of the unknown of what's going to happen. The other term I like to use for that is volatility. Um, and the two biggest drivers of that right now are uh, interest rates. We all know interest rates have gone up quite a bit here recently. Um, and inflation, right? Those are the big uh, factors that people are concerned about. Um, so the great news is uh, inflation is actually a really good thing for real estate. It's actually an inflation hedge. It actually benefits us. Um, and, and the same goes in our, our lending business. Increasing values is actually a good thing for what we do. It's, it's actually an inflation hedge, real estate. And interest rates, when the majority in the fastest growing sector we do is at a short-term lender, interest rates going up actually benefits us. As Kip told me earlier today, our rates now are much closer to what banks charge. And he didn't give me as hard of a time about what our, our rates are. In all seriousness, that means I need to charge him more um, uh, because you know it benefits us, right? When people use us uh, over a bank, al almost all of our borrowers are fully bankable, right? Um, and they'll use us. If a bank's going to charge 5% and DLP is going to charge 9%, you have to figure out that friction cost, right? How much is it worth to work with DLP to save the headache and, and work with somebody we know and we trust and we can count on is going to move quickly and easily and bring, other, bring value to me, right? So as bank rates go up, that reduces that friction cost. It actually helps with more business. In addition, when interest go up and there's volatility, a lot of other lenders go out of the market, which means less competition, which benefits us. So... For us, instability is, is all, and all volatility is a good thing. Anytime people ask me, every one of these events, there's always something new happening. You know, for a while it was, what's going to happen when 1031 exchanges go away? Right? What's going to happen if somebody, somebody becomes president? What's going to happen if interest rates go up? What happens if property values go down? What hap you know, there's always something that's going to happen. And it's always the fear of it happening right, that, that creates more uh, concern and issues than whatever actually happens. But that, that fear creates opportunity. Um, that fear creates places to invest. So example, in you know, March of 2020, when COVID hit um, and a lot of colleges got shut down, um, uh, a number of student housing operators got really hurt um, because you know, colleges were shut down, they had heavy vacancies, especially in certain parts of the country, right? And a lot of them really struggled. So we realized there was a lot of student housing operators in distress. So we went out and started buying student housing properties and we just took a different perspective. We said, we're gonna make these properties certainly available to students, but we'll also make them available to everybody, right? Because we were investing in markets where the multifamily market was 97% occupied and doing plenty well, but just the college was shut down, right? Um, and we did really, really well on that strategy. So anytime there's significant change that creates opportunities to invest. So we're very bullish, very excited about the opportunities to lend, the opportunities to buy um, in times of you know, volatility, which we certainly have today. Anybody else? Uh, Don, before you wrap up, I uh, just wanted to let you know that we do have some of our best operator partners, elite members coming into and in the room here. Uh, please feel free to coordinate with them, ask them questions, ask us questions. We're going to be coming around the room. Another very important thing is the food. Uh, we're going to be having uh, food coming out here. There are going to be stations back here and folks coming around. So uh, please stick around for some amazing food, fellowship, uh, some great conversations. Uh, and I'll turn it over for any final uh, questions uh, before uh, we wrap up with Don. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. I'll be around as well, everybody else. Thank you.